All right, um, welcome everybody. Some of you asked me to give a brief introduction about my um, custom controller for the 45000 looper by a company called Electroharmonics. I built this controller as part of my bachelor thesis at Technical University Vienna. And the reason why I'm doing this now is because I want to um, tear apart this prototype again because I need the individual parts and components for other projects. Yep, that's why I'm doing it now. So the main goal basically was to build an abstraction layer between the 45000 looper and its user. In my opinion, controlling this 45000 looper is rather complex. Um, for those of you who don't know this device, just a brief uh, introduction. This is a basic looper that, that can do all the basic looping stuff. You can uh, record some audio material, you can then play it back afterwards, you can uh, also record additional material onto it that's called uh, overdubbing. And yes, I think most of you should be familiar with those kind of yeah, features. So it's actually a, a pretty nice looping device, but there's one thing that always bothered me, and that is the way you control it. You have have those three um, important buttons. They are called New Loop, uh, Record and Play, and they are responsible for changing the uh, device's state. So for example, if you want to record a new loop, you would um, first have to press the button New Loop, um, which is rather intuitive. And afterwards you would press the record button to, s to finally start the recording, which is also very intuitive. Afterwards you probably want to play the recorded material back um, and you would assume, you would probably assume that you need to push the play button to do that. Um, but as you can see, I just did that, as you can see um, it uh, ended the overdubbing mode instead. So you do not need to press the play button but you would have to press the record button to go from um, state recording to state playback. So that would be just one um, of those pretty counterintuitive examples, at least in my opinion. I could now press the record button to leave the overdubbing state and to enter the playback state. And afterwards I could also press the play button to finally stop the looper. So what I wanted to point out here is that the behavior of those buttons actually depend on the state that the looper is currently in. So for example, I pressed the play button twice, but the first time it um, entered the overdubbing state and the second time it stopped the playback state. So I have been using this device on stage. I'm a musician too and I'm looping guitar and I'm simultaneously singing and I'm also sometimes playing some percussion with my feet and if this device is behaving uh, in such a complex way it's just too much to handle uh, for one person so that is why I tried to come up with a custom controller that solves this problem and it actually is a pretty simple problem to be honest the nice thing about the 45000 looper is that it is MIDI compatible so you can control it or you can control most of its functionality uh, with standard MIDI messages and that is actually pretty easy uh, to understand. It They just mapped the onboard buttons to MIDI messages so every button has exactly one MIDI message assigned and, and as soon as you send one of those MIDI messages the device simply behaves as if its corresponding button would have been pushed. So, well, pretty easy to understand, I think. What I finally came up with was um, this prototype you can see here. It's um, focusing on those four buttons, those four colorful buttons in green, blue, red and white. They are basically corresponding to um, to the possible states within the looping device. So the looper can play back some recorded material, it can be in overdubbing state, it can, can be recording 
something new and it can be in idle or just stopped state and those are exactly the states that are mapped to those four uh, colorful buttons. So what the controller does is it basically does all the thinking for me so I don't have to think about the necessary button um, or the necessary sequence of button pushes anymore. That, that would be necessary to go from state A to state B but instead I simply uh, push the button that corresponds to the state I want to go or I want to uh, transition into and the controller does the rest. Of course you have to do some initial setup um, to do um, this you enter the menu with this white square button and then you can um, tell the custom controller uh, which state the 45,000 looper is currently in. You do so with this rotary um, knob and once that is done, um, well you are done setting the device up, you don't have to do anything else anymore, um, that's just an initial setup. You can see that uh, both devices are now in state stop. Um, you can also see this uh, in this display and if I want to go to state playback now for example I would simply push the green button and then you can see the device, that both devices actually go into the desired state. If I press the stop button the device goes into stop mode. I also created a little animation for the state transitions. You can see that once you press a button. Unfortunately, there are also some um, barricades, I would call it. There are some scenarios that are simply not useful or not usable in real life uh, scenarios because the 45,000 45, looper has um, some limitations regarding the incoming MIDI messages. So those MIDI messages that um, uh, the device receives, they need to be at least 300 milliseconds apart from each other. And um, to make this concept um, useful in real life scenarios, we should actually send those MIDI messages almost um, at once. And, and some of those state transitions need need a sequence of, of up to three button pushes or up to three um, successive MIDI messages. And so this would mean in those cases the whole transition would take at least 600 milliseconds. Um, actually, this is even a little bit more. I measured it. And that's of course not pretty um, usable on stage, to be honest. But I also have to mention that those more complex um, state transitions are actually not that uh, important. So it's something like being in overdubbing state and then immediately going to recording a brand new loop, which means to erase the previously recorded, uh, recorded material. And that is something that is probably not needed in... Um, real life scenarios. I don't know. It Of course it depends on the song uh, arrangements and, and other stuff, but I would not use it. So I think that's actually already it. Um, if you want to build the same thing, you can simply look at this mockup I'm showing you right now. And the second thing you are going to need would be the, the code. For the microcontroller, I'm going to upload it to my uh, GitHub account pretty soon. Um, and then I will also put a link to, to it uh, into the YouTube video description. Of course, I can't guarantee that the code is somehow um, the most beautiful solution out there. I did this two years ago. And I probably would do some things a little bit different now <laughs> because as a software developer I'm learning so much stuff in such a short period of time. So, well, I actually don't want to look at my source code anymore now. <laughs> I'm afraid to do so. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed my um, great English. And <laughs> um, thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, just post it into the comments section. Thanks and well, see you soon, I guess.